Apple jumps after hours as it forecasts a return to sales growth. The iPhone maker announcing a $110 billion share buyback, the biggest in US history. Earlier this week, Apple reported earnings and they announced the largest buyback in history at $110 billion. And obviously that made large headlines and it led many people to believe, to confirm their suspicions, that Apple fundamentally is done growing and as a result is turning into a value stock that just returns the majority of their cash flow to their investors. Now, in this video, I brought together Steven and Roy to discuss an alternative strategy for Apple to continue and even accelerate their growth particularly within content. So make sure to stick around. Now, just as a primer, Apple does more buybacks than any company in the world. And here you can see a list of the top companies doing buybacks and Apple consistently sits at the top of the list since they started this buyback strategy back in 2013. Previously, the record for the largest buyback ever was 100 billion set by Apple. And in several years before that, 90 billion consistently set by Apple. And this time around, that number is increasing. 110 billion is the most recent number we got this week to the point where Apple is essentially just a hedge fund that also makes phones uh, just because they are returning a large amount of capital back to shareholders. By doing buybacks, they're also increasing their earnings per share and they reduce the amount of shares outstanding. And ever since they started incorporating buybacks in 2013, they have aggressively reduced the amount of shares outstanding to the point where they're back to like 1990s levels of shares outstanding. And yeah, it leads many to think that Apple is done growing. And as a result, they're focusing on returning that excess cash, especially in recent quarters where the actual hardware sales are declining. Then people are saying, OK, well, you know, we've plateaued in terms of the growth and now they're going to return a lot back. So, OK, let's level set. Me talking about Apple was definitely not on your 2024 bingo card. Well, as some of you probably already know, Apple is the largest position in my dividend portfolio. So I wanted to share a clip from a members only discussion on my channel that was locked that Roy, Steven and myself had last Friday as a reaction to Google's recent $70 billion buyback, because I think that it's relevant. And quite frankly, I think the strategy is brilliant. What Steven proposes as an alternative strategy for Apple on how they can better allocate all of that money as opposed to doing buybacks. And by the way, if you are not a member of the channel, definitely consider subscribing. There's a lot of conversations that goes on that's locked to just the regular viewers that I publish on a weekly basis in members only videos. But this time around, I clipped together some segments of a much longer members only video to actually share this idea with you. So let me know what you think about it. And I hope you enjoy. Apple's making a mistake by not going after the content game. You can build a better Netflix. Everybody's going goo goo over Gaga for freaking Netflix. You give me Apple's budget for buybacks for a year, I'm buying Warner Brothers Discovery for $20 billion. You get Warner Brothers Movie Studio, you get HBO, you get Discovery, you get Food Network, you get TBS, Turner, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going out and I'm buying Manchester United, public company. I'm going out and buying the Atlanta Braves. I'm going out and buying the Yankees. I'm going out and buying MSG. Then I'm going to go buy maybe another movie studio or maybe Paramount. Now I'm going to put all of it on Apple TV. I'm going to take it all off of cable TV and I'm going to create a much better content library than any of the streaming services. And I'm going to take a ton of sports off of network broadcast. I'm going to embed everything in Apple services. It's going to cost me one year of buybacks. When we get the Vision Pro down to a size of Oakley's or Ray-Bans, have fun yeah. competing. We're going to make movies directly for that and not for movie theaters. All live sports, we're putting cameras in our stadiums that we have own in the different sections you want to go hang out with the bleacher creatures at yankee stadium you want to sit behind home plate you want to sit courtside at a knicks game we own those teams virtual tickets oh and you know what while we're at it maybe i'll just buy a live nation too maybe now all of their concerts are going to be on apple vision pro through services maybe we're going to have virtual tickets through everything we're going to go buy endeavor too we're now going to own ufc and wwa every asset that is content that is public they should buy Yankees are in public. I just threw that in there. But the Knicks are. Manchester United is. Endeavor owns UFC and WWE. Warner Brothers Discovery is public. Paramount's public. Buy all of them. Buy all of them. Like yeah, you no, generate a hundred billion dollars in profitability a year. Make it where Netflix can't compete. I go on Netflix. I don't know what to watch. I spend 15 minutes trying to figure out what to watch. But I mean, seriously, content's king, right? Apple Plus has some really nice original content. I was so surprised with the quality of content that's actually 
actually some of the best shows are on Apple TV Plus. Mm-hmm. Warner That's Brothers that. Discovery has a market cap of 20.31 billion. Paramount Global, 8.53 billion. Manchester United's 2.65 billion. Madison Square Garden Group owns the Knicks and the Rangers. So now you got basketball and hockey. They're 4.49 billion. But how about Sirius Satellite Radio? Throw that in there for the music and the uh, sports. Howard and everything. Sirius is 11.62. So these five entities, Paramount, Warner Brothers Discovery, MSG, Manchester United, and Sirius Satellite, 47.6 billion, two quarters of buybacks. You're not tapping any debt markets. You're throwing all that right into Apple services. And now you produce all your shows through Warner Brothers. How is that not the greatest content play for them to really boost their glasses and get people away from TVs? Live Nation is a 20 billion market cap. So for $67 billion, you get Live Nation and all these companies. And you start talking about virtual tickets to concerts and sporting events and everything. Come on, what's Apple doing? They need to do something. Do this. Come a holding company for entertainment. Where does most people watch Netflix? TV is definitely one of them, but a lot of people watch on their tablets or on their computers or on their phones. When they're in the subway or on the train or when they're on a plane, airport, mobile devices is huge. Oh, cool. We're going to buy all this and guess what? We're going to give everybody not... 30 free. We're going to give everybody 90 days, a full quarter free of Apple TV. I actually get that from my phone service, T-Mobile. So every so often they give us six months free. And it's like, I wouldn't have tried out Apple TV. That, like Tevis, I was pleasantly surprised. I'm like, man, there's some stuff that we're not interested in, but it's all premium stuff, whether we're interested in it or not. And some of those shows are like, like Ted Lasso is my goodness good. But it's thin. Like you get to the end of, of the library and you're like, well, there's nothing else I want to watch. Well, they're new, right? Like Apple Studios yeah. is plowing a ton of money into content, original content every single year. Yeah. Look, I think at the end of the day, the consumer wins out here. Now that you're having more entrance in Prime and Apple TV and HBO has been around for quite a while. And so you have all of these services at the end of the day like you have so much more content because they're all making original content trying to win over that consumer yeah you might end up subscribing to like two or three services instead of just one but you just get so much more original content look i think the problem with apple doing all this and i totally agree with the strategy tim cook's just not the guy to do it oh He's- that, yeah i get it and the best part is while you're waiting for it to build original content you got all the sports with this too that generates the content on its own. It, this is a no-brainer for them because what's the worst thing that happens? It doesn't work out. Cool. We burned 50 billion, 60 billion dollars on content. I mean, they're just gonna show you anywhere on Apple TV. It's a write-off. I mean, they burn just as much on those stupid car projects. So. Exactly. At least this actually works with their business model. Tim Cook, he's a good CEO, but he is he's just an operator. And he's in this time where there's rapid change and innovation. And I think he and Sundar Pichai are, are just the, the weak men, odd men out. They can't just sit here. I don't think Apple realizes that. They're just sitting on their cash. They're printing money. Well, but eventually, you're not able to do that anymore. What if they do something really dumb? What if they said, you know what? And I actually like this idea. Let's just go buy Intel. Why would they do that? They moved away from Intel from their chips. So they do all their own architecture through the M-series chips. They're not doing the manufacturing of their chips. You buy Intel... You now have vertically integrated all your hardware, your design and building your chips. And you're now building all your competition's chips because Intel's already got the deals for the foundries. I'm not saying it's a good idea, but it's probably a better move than just sitting on cash because you know what? They could turn Intel around pretty easily. So I think the thesis here, and just to wrap up this video, they got to do something with their money. They can't just sit on it.